some of the best advice that I give them is don't do it. It's a terrible idea. You wake up the next day and you're like, oh, the bar's been reset. Where to from here? We can triple your ROAS. Like, you can't. You absolutely can't. Welcome to Add to Cart, Australia's leading e-commerce podcast that express delivers all you need to know in the fast-moving world of online retail. Every week, Nathan Bush from eSuite and an e-commerce industry expert will share the news, research and insights that you need to know to keep you at the top of your game. And of course, keep your customers adding to cart. Hello and welcome to Add to Cart. My name is Nathan Bush, host of Add to Cart and director at e-commerce talent agency eSuite. Now, you know me, I'm pretty humble. I don't like to brag. It's a terrible trait. But I must draw your attention that the fact that today's guest has confirmed my superiority over another accomplished host in the business, and I'd be lying if I wasn't flattered. So sorry, Koshi, you're no longer the cash cow. New King's in town, and it makes my guest today one of my favorites. I am talking to Paul Waddy, e-commerce expert extraordinaire and all-round nice guy. Paul is the principal of Paul Waddy Advisory and director at Ecom Nation, where he advises some of Australia's leading online retailers, including Mason de Sabre, g Co, and Kind is Cool. He's been the head of operations at Shopo, the CEO of The Horse, and is now the author of Shopify for Dummies and Selling Online for Dummies. On top of this, he was recently awarded the Industry Award at Online Retailer. He's a bit of an underachiever. Wherever you are on your e-commerce journey, trust me, you are going to learn something valuable from Paul. In this chat, Paul shares the pursuits that get him most excited, his top Shopify app recommendations, and what he believes is the key driver in e-commerce success. So thanks to our partners, Shopify Plus and Paclio, here's our conversation with Paul Waddy, e-commerce advisor, author of Shopify for Dummies, and compliment giver extraordinaire. Paul. Thank you for joining us on Add to Cart. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on, Nathan. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time now, so here we are. It has been a long time coming, and I know I've had so many people actually come up to me and say, when's Paul going to be on the show? And they don't even need to say your last name now. You're like Madonna in the e-commerce industry. Most of those people have been me. (laughs) (laughs) But every bloody <laughs> week in my LinkedIn inbox, I, I'm like, hopefully those messages stop. Me. Yeah, sorry, I'll cut, I'll cut back. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say a massive congratulations. I feel there's so much to congratulate you on. You're um on just a massive, awesome streak at the moment of doing really great things in e-commerce. But the one thing that really stood out for me was the industry recognition award that you picked up at online retailer at the awards night. It was a really great moment, and and it was an awesome speech that you did too. What did that award mean to you? Thanks, firstly, mate. I appreciate that. And and back at you, I admire everything that you've been doing as well. That was nice. I mean, I genuinely wasn't really expecting it, but don't get me wrong. I'm a competitive person, so I want to enter, you know, I want to win at marbles if I'm playing in marbles. So, But I keep a lid on that and and make sure that I try and... um, If I'm up for stuff like that, I try and make sure that it's deserving that I've worked my ass off. So it meant a lot. And as I said on the night in my speech, it meant a lot because of where my background, which is and came from a raised by a single mum on a disability pension, as Albo said at his when he was elected. And yeah, it wasn't always easy, to be honest with you. I wasn't particularly very, very good at school. And so, but what I have done is made the most of every opportunity. And so I don't work for these things, but I definitely appreciate them when they come along because it's a bit of an, an acknowledgement for my mum, really, and sort of say, "Oh, mum, I came good," and my grandparents who raised me, and so we say, "Well, I wasn't always great, but I've, I'm doing okay now." So it's really to sort of, for me, it's about one honouring them, and then two, also, it's nice for my kids. I've got three little girls, and it's just stuff that they'll there's a award here that they'll they'll probably get a text throughout and start drawing on it but (laughs) it's just little things and I like to work in blocks you know and so and work towards a sort of crescendo of something and little moments like that is a bit of a time where you can sit down and say oh that was good but to be honest they stress me out a bit too because then you you wake up the next day and you're like oh the bar's been reset where to from here so it's um that's the anxiety in me that kicks in, which is uh, both a, a positive and a negative. 
And you mentioned in there that you acknowledged your mum and your background in your speech. It was a really beautiful speech on the night. Did the speech get back to your mum? Did she hear about it? I'll tell you who it did get back to is my wife. Because <laughs> I forgot to I forgot to thank her and I'll I'll thank her now and send her this afterwards. Thank you, sweetheart. I promise I won't edit that bit out for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty no fuss, to be honest. So I didn't, you know, I, I didn't even really tell her. I didn't really tell her about it. I don't don't get me wrong, I want to win, as I said, and my goal is to be the best in the world at what I do. I'm absolutely fine saying that, but I don't bang on about it. So I don't think I even told her, to be honest. I think somebody else did, but my style is just pick up and keep going the next day. I, I don't do it for that sort of stuff. I just said it because that's how I felt. Thanks, Mum. Good on you. Love you. And on we go. Nice. So good. All right. So moving on from that very eventful night, you're now an author. Yeah. It's something that came out of the blue for me, obviously not for you because you've been writing the thing for so long, but it was great to see. you. Can you tell us about the book that you've written and just released? Yeah, well, it did come out of the blue for me as well. So it's um, I've just released, um, here's one I prepared earlier, Shopify for Dummies, which is part of the dummies. I'll have to get you one actually, Nathan. Part of the, the dummies. I fit, I fit the title. Don't worry about that. No, no, I always feel bad gifting it. And I write in the cover, you, you don't need this, but someone you might will. <laughs> so the dummy series which is an enormous sort of franchise or series or whatever worldwide and i mentioned earlier i wasn't great at school but i was pretty good at writing and i think the reason for that is you didn't have to prepare like it was it, it just came like particularly creative writing it came from your head so there's no wrong answer shopify for dummies was a little bit different because it's obviously a technical book so it's aimed at people who are beginners. So a lot of people would come up to me and probably come up to you and say, oh, I've got a little online store or I want to start one or whatever. And I, I'm like, I'm not really comfortable charging for that because it's not right. So I built this book for them. They can pick it up, open their laptop, read it, you know, source a product, price a product, create a product, you know, manage your inventory, and then bang, go live at the last chapter. And it was a fortuitous conversation that I was having with a guy called uh, Mick Spencer, who yeah, he was on Shark Tank and he's been knocking around e-com for a while. And he wrote a book and he introduced me to the publisher. And for me, I just take those opportunities and I work the rest out later. So she said, yeah, what do you want to talk about? And I was like, e-commerce, <laughs> what do you got? You know, she was like, well, what have you got? And I said, well, what I struggle with is that there's so many gurus out there who are just absolute bell ends who... <laughs> charge a large sum of money and deliver peanuts and promise profits and it doesn't work like that and I just wanted a cheap accessible book that people would pick up and read and I said there just needs to be a guide a lot like your course which is more advanced than than what I'm working on this doesn't exist there's no like you can't do e-commerce in uni mm. or TAFE or whatever so there needs to be more of this out there more from trusted sources and I said to her kind of like a dummy's guide to e-commerce and she said oh you know we we own that <laughs> franchise globally and I was like oh no when she said would you like to write one and I said yeah yeah definitely definitely and then I had to submit writing and it was not that easy you know I had to submit it and then they said great great would you like to do a initially it was selling online for dummies which, which I'm still working on and then a junior book like a mini book which was a pocket book Shopify for dummies but then they said oh could you do two big books and I was like yeah 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 two absolutely <laughs> could you do them at the same time yeah yeah no problem no problem and they're going to be released globally, she said. That's great news. Like we were thinking Australia, but globally they haven't been done. So I was like, yeah, yeah, no worries. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. It was hard work, you know. It was like late nights after the kids went to bed. It was seriously tough, one of the toughest things I've ever done. And, um, you know, at the same time doing a bunch of other things, starting new businesses and helping clients and, but again, it's um, it's that sense of achievement. Again, I work in milestones, so finishing was a finishing each chapter was a milestone. And to give you an idea of the process, you know, it is a big book. There's 20 chapters plus the intros and stuff, and each one's about 30 pages. Mm. And each chapter has to be written in a very specific dummy style, and you get five or six <laughs> revisions sent to you. So you send one off, and you move on to the next chapter, and they're saying, "Great, when's the next next chapter coming?" Yeah, I'll have it for you this week. And then all your revisions start coming in, all your edits. And I was like, 
Oh, that's hard. So it was hard because Shopify moves fast as well. Yeah, that would be hard. It, and it's like, so you and I'm following along. And as I said, it, it's literally supposed to be click here, add your inventory, click here, add your tags. It's very, you know, it's it's got to be specific. But for me, the challenge was to make it specific, but not get in the weeds. And I did that a few times. I had to pull back and I was like, just delete that. Like <laughs> how to register your Google merchant account. I'll just Google it, work that out. But, you know, and then at the other end of the spectrum, it was don't keep it too general and too, you know, top level strategic, which in a sense is a lot of what I do with my clients. So it was finding that balance. And um, luckily I had a great editor and a great team at Wiley, the publishers, and and she was basically doing the steps as I was, as she was reading. So she was sort of really putting me to the test. And, and I think having that sort of scrutiny made it a better book. And it is good. Like for me, you don't do it for money. Like, don't get me wrong. If you're listening, go and buy the book. But, um, <laughs> Ideally through your referral link, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, we can organize that. Yeah, <laughs> I think I gave you that. But, you know, for me, what would thrill me is, um, is people who reach out and say, read your book, started my store, made some sales going well or changed. I've got a store. Now it's profitable because I read your book. So that's why I'm doing it. And the other part of why I'm doing it is whatever money you do make, you know, as books sell, you get royalties, your kids and their kids and their kids and their kids get it. So even if they're getting a hundred bucks a week from their great, great grandfather, Paul, (laughs) cool. No problem. That for me was a really good feeling because it's sort of just Everything that I work for is for them. Like I don't drive flashy cars. I don't do anything like that. I I just um, build something for them. So that was a real attraction for me. If you're listening to this at your desk, take a moment to assess, am I really comfortable? This was the problem that the team over at Desky was solving with the launch of their ergonomic standing desks and office equipment. But here's the twist. It was actually Desky that weren't comfortable. With launching their business on anything else but Shopify Plus, that is, with the huge work from home spike in 2020, Desky gave themselves six months to launch with Shopify Plus. And they did it in three. They achieved an increase of revenue up to 1,000% and an increased conversion rate of 187%. No word on whether they did all of this standing up the whole time. Very impressive if that's the case. To read more of Desky's story and see other case studies, visit the customer section on shopify.com.au forward slash plus. What I really liked about where you started the story was that you had a specific customer or person in mind when you're writing the book. You had those people who would come up to you saying, I want to start a store and you knew exactly the mindset and the stage of business that they were at, which must have made it a lot easier. Yeah, it did. And I could picture friends that, that were yeah. like, you've got to read this book. And I would sense check it off friends as I was writing it. And honestly, they were my motivator. Well, they were the the sort of my muse, if you will, like as to how I would write it. And I just pictured them. I was like, oh, I've seen people price their products wrong all the time. So I'm going to talk about pricing. Now, even though that's not specifically a Shopify thing, I do mention it because one of my bugbears is, again, like, Make money, e-commerce is all about Facebook marketing or Instagram marketing. Well, that's one of a thousand things that go into e-commerce, including what you do, people and training and all those sorts of things, building up the basics. So I thought it was important to tell those people, hey, before you even get into Shopify, if your margin isn't this, go back to the drawing board. If you haven't done your, if you can't tell me what problem your product solves in a sentence, back to the drawing board. So I was writing it to protect these people because I've just seen so many friends, including myself when I start, absolutely do their cash starting out of business. And I just, I was writing it and and the book is harsh at times. It sort of challenges people at times to say, that's a bad idea. And a lot of what I do, Nathan, with new businesses who come to me, I don't really work with new businesses, but if friends and stuff come to me, some of the best advice that I give them is don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. <laughs> You're like the Scott Pape of e-commerce. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll take that, but that's how it's got to be. It's a real business and sometimes it's ugly and that's cool. And why did you focus specifically on Shopify rather than 
say, other platforms or a broader e-commerce theme? Well, good question. So initially I started writing Selling Online for Dummies first and then Shopify for Dummies was supposed to come after that as a natural progression. So in Selling Online for Dummies, which comes out in April next year, I definitely take an agnostic approach to platforms. And I do anyway. My first site was built on Magento. I've used Magento a lot and it's great. It just so happens that in my ecosystem, most of my clients that I advise are on Shopify. And also, I just personally felt that the purpose of what I'm trying to do here is help people change their lives or change their path, as I say. Like, yeah, you're in this industry or that industry, but you want to give e-commerce a go. And I just simply thought that Shopify was the best vehicle where somebody could pick up a book, have very little capital, but get it going. And obviously, Shopify had has been gaining market share incredibly rapidly. And I just, I didn't see anybody, I saw a ton of crappy YouTube videos, but I didn't <laughs> see anybody just nailing and say, this is how you do Shopify. So I thought I'll give it a go. It makes sense. And it's the kind of platform that you can sign up, whether it's with that free trial to start with yeah. while you're reading the book and do both at the same time, which you can't do with all platforms. Exactly. You can actually read the book and follow along on the laptop. And my first chapter is, hey, here's how to sign up for your free trial. Like you could actually read the book in the 14 days that the free trial runs for and have your store launch. So then you only pay if you feel that you've got something going. So um, it was definitely designed to be like, close the book, press go, and and away you go. And I thought Shopify was the best platform for that. And did you do it with Shopify's involvement at all or totally independent? No, not really. Yeah, just just independent. I did stay in touch with with Shopify and and they sort of gave it their blessing and so on. And, you know, and and I, yeah, I I kept them involved. But um, at the end of the day, I I also wanted it to be, um, be an independent book and not just a, a marketing tool for Shopify. But, but is it true that they've agreed to put a total code freeze on all of Shopify for the next 10 years so your book stays relevant? Yeah, that was part of, <laughs> that was part of the deal. Okay, uh, cool. <laughs> I would have liked some, some of that sort of support. Look, I've got some good contacts and friends at Shopify and they gave it their blessing and I, I certainly will. Um, yeah, I'll probably send them a couple of copies and I might send a few of the other platforms a few copies as well. <laughs> if I can learn something. Now you've hinted at it already. I'm keen to dive in and test some of this Shopify knowledge and bring it out for our listeners. You hinted at it before, but what if I was to set up a store today and I was using Shopify, obviously, what would be the three basics that you think is essential for me to get right from the get-go? That's a really good question because most people don't care about it and they need to. Honestly, I think it's, and I I do talk about this in the book, it's sort of, it's not just putting any crappy product on the site. So I think product is the key to the key driver in e-commerce success. I'll definitely always say that. And for anyone listening who might be starting a business or Maybe they've got an e-commerce business that's just taken a turn. It's not doing so well. I really encourage people to go back to when you started initially thinking about your business and you went to bed dreaming about how your product was going to change the world. Now, too many people now are hung up on my Facebook ROAS or you know the next paid media yep. channel. And I always say, is, did, is that what you went to bed dreaming about when you started my Facebook ROAS? So that's So it's going back to basics. So the product, sourcing a product that's trending. And just on that topic, do you feel like it's almost, people kind of hide how important product is because there is an emphasis on customer and you've always got to look after customer and it always sounds bad to say that product is really important. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, commerce from the dawn of time, it's like supply and demand. Here's a product you need. Here's a fair price. Let's go. And people lose sight of that. You cannot force a crappy product down a consumer's throat. And if you want to play that game, you will not make money because you're just paying a fortune to acquire customers who don't really want you. And you won't do it twice, right? Even if you get it once. And then another, you know, there are these products who are like, oh, I didn't know I needed you. Well, let's get them a product they do need. So I think that product drives everything in e-commerce. And including ROAS, like if you've got an interesting product and you've got an interesting brand and you're doing interesting things, the ROAS will follow. 
there's no silver bullet in digital marketing. All of that, a, posit, a great ROAS is the sum of many parts. And those many parts are, you know, product and people and brand and creative and all those cool things that people tend to neglect after a certain period of time. So I those three things really are sell me in a sentence what problem does your product solves. And don't give me that it's better than everyone. It's a bit better than my competitor and a bit cheaper. No, it doesn't, it doesn't fly. I made that mistake in my first business. It's got to be a genuine, I've got it, you know, Eureka, I've got it. And too many people rush to say, yeah, 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 let's just, let's just sell stuff online, commodities. Commodities are a hard game. So, you know, I think it's the product and that includes the pricing and making sure that your margins are strong and things like that. And a strong margin for me is 70% on a product. That's not achievable for everybody, but for a private label importing, that's absolutely what you need to be aiming for is 70% above. I think the the second gross margin, obviously. That's actually just product margin. So that's landed cost, sales price, XGST. Gross margin, when you add your freight, your outbound freight in, so I do include landed costs in that, but if you add your outbound freight in, Look, realistically, in your merchant fees, which are usually the things that I put in cost of sales, some people put marketing, I don't. So they put your merchant fees, your outbound freight, your packaging, over 50%, you're going well, you're set up. Under 50%, I'm sweating bullets. And uh, it's hard, but business is hard. And, And that's what I'm talking about. Get that right before you worry about, you know, your email flows. So I think setting the product up for success, I think learning the lingo, which is something I talk about in the book, you know, and that touches on what you do with your courses and what I'll be doing with mine is it's a trade. Like it's not fluff. It's not funny money as my friend Mark Bartz will say. It's real money that you're paying to buy stock and to pay for ads. Like it's coming off your credit card. You've got to pay that credit card back. So it's, and I always use this example, Nathan, like I know where the timing belt in my car is. Does that mean I should pop the hood and have a go at changing it? it might get me down the driveway in neutral, but it's, it's going to break. E-commerce is the same. If you can't tell me what, you know, AOV, CVR and bounce rate is, forget about it. Do the um, the industry, the respect of, of learning that sort of stuff and applying yourself and then launching the business. And the third, <laughs> but finally got to the third, <laughs> the third one is get your cash ready, you know, get your money ready. So how many people out there starting an e-commerce business or some of them even running a good e-commerce business could tell you how much you should spend on marketing. Not many. And I include $50 million a year businesses in that category. The mistakes we make at startup are sometimes the same mistakes we make at scale. And I can tell you where they're more costly. And, um, you know, so it's get your budget right. Your good old financial modeling. And that's something that I've spent a lot of time on, a lot of time understanding the numbers. And I think you need to be strong in the numbers. Many e-commerce people are strong on brand, weak on business. I always say to my clients, we're aiming to be as good a business as we are a brand. Hmm. And I just think that's not on the priority list for people. And so I would say, get your cash. Are you going to lose money in the start? That's fine if you are, but for how long? How much cash does that mean I actually need? Am I going to be selling granddad's car to to fund this in six months or going for a loan at a 13% interest rate? Or just have that cash ready, understand what a cash burn is, understand how much I need to buy of stock and when I need to rebuy it. That's another trap. It's like, oh, well, I need new stock now, but I haven't sold the last one. So understand, is it two months cover, three months cover? You must understand those metrics. So what I find myself doing is quizzing people on those. And and when I do my due diligence, my due diligence is primarily done in the discussion with the founder. And if they're a bit at sea with some of those metrics, the stormy seas ahead. So I really am very passionate about upskilling people in the metrics and the business business side of things, the finance side of things, and pulling people's heads out of their Facebook ad accounts for a while. Sounds great. Now, if we dive a little bit deeper into Shopify itself, are there any underused features or functionality that you wrote about in the book that you were like, why isn't everyone using this? Yeah, there's heaps. The reporting is underused generally. The amount of retailers that I see who don't enter their cost prices in their inventory, mate, put them in. You've got beautiful inventory reporting for free as part of your plan. Put your cost prices in 
and and your tags use your tags because we can generate all sorts of reports on your product tags but um the abc inventory analysis is my favorite why i like that nathan is and that's often where i'll start when i audit a business that can often uncover your quickest way to grow your revenue because it, it'll tell you which of your best sellers are out of stock and or at danger of becoming out of stock and how much it's costing you every single day it'll also tell you what percent of your so you know for those listening abc analysis grade a product your best product the criteria is it drives 80 percent of your revenue it should be roughly 20 percent of your inventory holding mm-hmm. grade b product it's driving 15 percent of your revenue so that's pretty good and grade c product is garbage you could torch it and you'll lose five percent of your revenue now If you're listening, jump on, have a look at your Shopify store. I'll probably bet you that most of you are loaded up on grade C inventory. And then a lot of you will will sort of say, sale period coming up, let's put my best sellers on. Start with your grade C inventory. If you put a torch to it all today, or you sold it all at cost price or whatever, you you lost it in a a container, fell off the boat, you'd you'd only lose 5% of your revenue. So uh, turn it into cash, fix your balance sheet, less inventory, more cash. You've refreshed your website, the new range is about to drop. You've never had more customer service options. Hey, but take a look over there at that boring pile of packaging boxes. Ugh, ugly. Time to give that some love. Luckily, Packlio is here to bring some joy to your customer's delivery and unboxing experience. It's been ignored for way too long. With vibrant colors, cool designs, and eco-friendly credentials, there are no more excuses for boring boxes. Even better. Paclio is Australian owned and operated with same day dispatch and 14 day returns. There's nothing boring about that. Check out the Paclio range of e-commerce packaging options at paclio.com. That's Paclio, P-A-C-K-L-E-O, paclio.com. That's a really great tip. Thanks, Paul. And I haven't dived into that myself. So that is really great to hear. In terms of flipping it now, in terms of the ecosystem around Shopify, do you have a favorite Shopify app that you kind of go, every store has got to be using this? You know, it's a good question. I I wrote a chapter on it because there's so many. Part of the the appeal of um, Shopify is these plug and play apps, which are, um, you know, probably have development agencies pulling their hair out because you don't need them. So, Straight from my book, I give my 10 top apps. Oh, there we go. You do put it all on the line here. You don't, you know, sit on the fence at all, do you? No, no. This is my little black book of apps. And I'll only put ones in here that I've used and that I love. And in apps, I include integrations, anything that plugs in and goes. So I couldn't pick a favorite. That's the first thing I'll say. So I'm going to give you, I'm just going to give you three. Okay. I was going to pick three at random from from each other. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. for customer service. So I love that. And as I wrote right here, the customer always comes first. But it gives you, the reason I like it, and again, framing this around people who might be new to e-commerce is that it just gives you everything you need for the customer. The reporting's good. You can set it up in an hour. The team's friendly. The customer service is good. You can do lots of actions like refund customers inside of Shopify. I'm going to throw one in there for the marketers. I like Push Owl for push notifications. And again, the reason I like it is I've seen a positive ROI. Um, With most clients, it's super easy. It gets good cut through. Yeah, so we're talking about web push notifications and you can get started on a free free plan. I'll give you two more, 460 for shoppable Instagram and user-generated content. That's a big space at the moment. Everyone wants to um, work out how to monetize influencers and use user user-generated content. There's plenty of platforms floating around. 460, in my experience, is is a really good one, particularly if you're in the apparel space. And I've got to say the back in stock app for customer alerts. So if you're a brand that just keeps selling out of stock or you've got best sellers, the back in stock app, you know, you can collect, let's say, 100 people waiting for this blue jumper to drop back in. Once that email triggers, you generally see pretty good revenue spike, particularly on bestsellers. So, but there's there's plenty more. Clavio, Akendo, Glue for data. There's so many great apps. I, I love browsing the app store. It's um, it's a delight. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also dangerous, right? Because you can start browsing and you go, oh, that looks good, even if it's not on your roadmap, and start adding a whole bunch of apps that potentially confuse. Yeah, you. and that'll slow your site down. So, um, and even you know when you're going to update your site, the question always is. How many of these apps are you actually using? 
So, yeah, if you add them, just remember to delete them. You, you don't need all of the apps. Just pick the ones that are, you know, are right for your uh, business and are actually going to add value. Like, you don't need to just add them because I reckon they're good. But if they if they fill a weakness in your business, I think that's important. So I'm always trying to strengthen the weaknesses. Yeah, great. And you obviously, when you're writing the book, you had to have in the back of your mind the Shopify roadmap or at least what you can see of it. Um, coming up to to make sure it's as future proof as possible. What are you most excited about in the future of Shopify? That that's such a hard question to answer because it's sort of like what are they working on and what do I want them to work on? The fulfillment network, the Shopify fulfillment network, is available in US and Canada. I'd love to see that be put forward. And the reason is across the board, it, freight costs are going up. You know, logistics costs are going up. So I think that needs to be tackled. I think it'll help people export, you know, by tapping into, you know, if you want to sell as an Aussie in the US, tapping into the Shopify fulfillment network. In Australia, particularly, we're a little bit behind with 3PL models and so on. In the States, you can plug into a 3PL, get a flat rate of five bucks to distribute all over the country, but that includes your storage, your picking, your packing, and your freight, and it plugs straight into your store. So freight and logistics needs to be done better. And, you know, look, Amazon Prime is pretty good. I'm a, I'm a, a member and I, I use it because it's just easy. I reckon Shopify needs to build that fulfillment network out and really get behind it. The other thing that I has at times been on the roadmap, and I, I don't know where it's at now, but is inventory management. So they purchased an app called Stocky, which I love, and but they flipped it onto the, the POS only. And for me, inventory management is not done well across the board. So what I want is good inventory management. I'm talking about outside of Shopify, but maybe it's owned by Shopify in the way that Stocky is, but it gives you demand forecasting. It gives you demand forecasting is something that, you know, 95% of businesses get wrong and it can sink a business. Inventory can kill a business. So I would love to see them reboot Stocky, breathe life back into it. And if you're listening from Shopify, my phone's here. Give me a call. I'll help you build it for a very small piece of equity. There we go. What an offer. Let's uh, let's see that one play out. Can we uh, actually yeah. record the conversation post this to see if it comes to life? Uh, if it comes to life, we can do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, love it. All right. And last question I've got on this. Are you ever going to write another book apart from the ones you've already committed to? Yeah, so then, well, I'm still writing this, this selling online for dummies. I'm really enjoying that one though, to be honest, because it's um it's my take on e-commerce. So it's more, you know, prove me wrong. It's my opinion. <laughs> it's like combined my 15 years of experience, mostly based on the mistakes I've made and all that sort of stuff. So that's coming out in April. I love writing. I've always wanted to, so I would definitely like to write another book. And it's it's easy to get a publisher to listen when you've got two in the bank already. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for me, if I got into writing again, I would like to write a book that probably is the story of me and my mom and all of that sort of stuff. And that's what I'm passionate about, Nathan. So e-commerce is great. I, I love it. I live and breathe and it pays my bills. But it's not what fulfills me. And um, we're all looking for fulfillment. So I'm passionate about mental health awareness. I'm, I'm passionate about motivating people to get off their ass and do what I did, which is honestly, like, if you're listening to this, if I can do it, absolutely anybody else can do it. If you're just prepared to um, become, as, as I say, you've got to become a, a different beast to everybody else. You've got to be prepared to do what, what other people will not do. And um, that's my passion is just writing about that and how I found that mentality and learning from my mom. She's got a heck of a story growing up with two young kids and suffering from mental health issues and get, doing a degree and battling on. So that would be my passion project. I, I wouldn't care how much money I made from it. I, I would, again, love to do it to sort of um, honor her legacy. So that absolutely, I'd do it again. It's a fun thing. It's a challenging thing, but yeah, nothing good really should come easy. I love that perspective. And, you know, sometimes we get caught up in our own world of e-commerce and e-commerce being yeah. our world, but it serves a purpose. We love it, it a purpose. but it's not the be-all and, and end-all, right? Uh, it's it's my vehicle for improving the lives of yeah. my family, but certainly there's more to life than all of those things and money and books and everything and um, perspective. That, you nailed it. That's what it's about. Now, speaking of perspective, Shopify for Dummies is one small part of everything that you're doing at the moment. You recently 
launched your post-COVID offering, Ecom Nation. What made you move from solo consulting into an agency model? Thanks for bringing that up because, you know, and shout out to Mal Chia and Andrew Sabatino, my co-founders there. Basically, Ecom Nation is a digital marketing agency. So my consulting and Mal's consulting is, is separate from that. However, we do certainly have clients that we work with together and also clients that then find them, their way into the agency. So it's a year old and Ecom Nation builds Shopify sites. That we have great Facebook marketers. We have outstanding team, email marketers, SEO specialists. We look at ourselves as a growth engine for e-commerce businesses. And then myself and Mal and Andrew lean in with our expertise and try and add that extra value to say, yeah, well, you know, Facebook's great, but have you thought about your pricing? And so we try and lean in with a bit of strategic advice. So we started that because um, mainly because I was always getting asked, do you know any good agencies? And I was like, yeah, I know some, but I, I just wanted one started by retailers, to be honest with you. I wanted an agency started by retailers. It's, it's no slight on any of the agencies out there. There are some some good ones, and but we wanted to do things differently and we we wanted to use our experience to change this mentality that's like, we can triple your ROAS. Like you can't, you absolutely <laughs> can't because you don't know the margins, you don't know the product, you don't know the roadmap, you know nothing about it. I thought you were swearing at them then for a second. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I probably have under my under my breath, but essentially, like we just started to connect connect that missing piece between retailers and and agencies, and it's going good. We've got great great team. We treat them very very well, and we try and get the the very best people. And when you start doing agency stuff, Nathan, then you you know you you can no, it's still still no. Well, I'll just keep at you I'm going down that path. Is it? <laughs> Yeah, I feel you. It's it's not easy, but the agency is good. And then to my friends, Mal and Andrew, I've known Mal, Andrew is my best man at my wedding 10 years ago and oh, I've cool. known him since I was 18. Um, and Mal's just a great guy and, and right up there with the top e-commerce mind. So we just thought, you know what? What we could do is bring the best people in e-commerce together and start an agency. And Andrew owns Donor Republic, which is the country's largest not-for-profit marketing agency. So he, he knows how to run an agency mm-hmm. as well. So um, profitable from day one, cash positive from day one, 12 months later, and it's um, it's going good. We're having a lot of fun and acquiring some cool clients, Mason the Sabre and presenting to, to Jeet Upco, which is my client who I'm wearing today. <laughs> Kind is cool, I think, signed this week. And that's that's a buzz for me. They're a great brand. And yeah, Karsha, heaps of cool brands joining. And we're trying to align with good people, good brands. And Drummer Boy, which is the non-alcoholic company that yeah. experience company that I invested in. And having a lot of fun. It's uh, it's a cool space. What's your lens now? Because I can imagine that you don't have to go out and beg for work. What's your lens on the type of people or businesses that you want to work with? I'm pretty full at the moment in terms of, you know, I typically work in the, the, the sort of 10 million to 150 million advisory space with a sweet spot being, you know, we've reached 10 million, we want to get to 20 kind of thing, or we've reached 15, we want to get to 30. That seems to be where most of my clients land. So I'm pretty right there. You know, I'm pretty full there. There's some great brands that I've worked with, but my lens for the other business I'm starting, which is learnecommerce.com.au, is a learning digital learning platform, much like yours, but for newbies. So it's not an accelerator as much as it is an introduction. Mm-hmm. And that lens is what I'm excited about to say. Anybody who's got an inkling that they want to know if, shop, if um, e-commerce can change their lives, so that is your mum, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your son, your nephew, your dog, wh- whoever wants to learn about e-commerce, that, and that's scalable for me. Yeah, let's be honest. You know that's scalable. Whereas, yeah, I've only got so much time. So, mm-hmm. but you know, in that advisory space, it's you know around the ten to one hundred million. We want to grow. We want to become more profitable. I like working on profit. On profit <laughs> revenue, for, revenue for vanity, mm-hmm. uh, profit for sanity, and a bit of cash in the bank. Cash in the bank, because my belief is, and I say this to all the founders I work with, is. Your e-commerce business has to change your life in a positive way. I don't understand how that can happen if you lose money. <laughs> so, you know, waiting for the big payout one day somewhere well, that's, in the future. That is exactly what they're doing, and it's that yeah. sucks, you know, because the big payout. Too many people reading about Adore Beauty and not about all the ones that have not gone so well. So, yeah, I, I sort of try to my passion now 
is learn e-commerce and the dummies books to try and get grow the industry, get more people in, get more people changing their lives using e-commerce. Beautiful. I love that. We're very similar there. But one thing that I was interested in and I didn't realize after knowing you for so long and didn't realize that you were an investor in was Green Friday. Yeah. Can yeah. you tell us about that? Yep. So firstly, I've made a, a decision to, I'm an advisor to businesses. I've just told you I hate people that, I shouldn't say hate, but I dislike attitudes where I'm a guru and, and I can 10 times your ROAS. I know I hate those screenshots of look mm. at this store that grew their revenue. I'm like, yeah, well, show us the margin or, you know, show us the little bit behind the graph. So I decided to say, well, put your money where your mouth is. Like yeah. put, put the money you make back into the businesses. So I decided to do two businesses a year. This was last year that I had decided. And I did two last year and I've done one this year already. The three are Green Friday slash release it. Innovation Beverage Group, which does Drummer Boy and it does like some vodkas and some things like that. It does um, beautiful gins and things like that. And it's actually going going great, a, a client. And then Refunded, which is the other one that I recently, that's this year's one so far. So I've got one more to go this year. So, yep, tap right. me on uh, Instagram or LinkedIn and show me what you got. But um, Green Friday, Peter Crideris, love him. Great track record, the founder there. Did started click frenzy, so excellent, excellent. Lives about three k's from where I live, so great track record. My investment criteria is that one, it should do some sort of good, mm -hmm. something in the world, and Green Friday does that, and Release It does that through its sustainable approach. And two, I should be able to add some sort of value because I don't invest in what I don't understand, and I understand this space. So I thought, oh, well, it makes sense that I can um, invest in this space. So. And a great team around, really nice people around, release it and um, got intro to that one through Paul Greenberg. And, you know, generally anything Paul touches turns to gold. So I was just piggyback off that. And uh, <laughs> But it's good. It's a good decision. Can you just give me the heads up next tip that you get? Because then I'll just follow you, follow Paul. Yeah, yeah no, no yeah. worries. Just don't, don't, don't blame me when they go south. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just... Thoroughly love catching up, Paul, and we've caught up ad hoc over the years, but this is the first time I think we've really got to, you know, go into detail on what you're doing, and it's just fascinating, and, and I love it, and you, you're a credit to, obviously, your family, as you spoke about, but also the industry and everyone around you, so well done, and obviously just the start. So I've just got one very important question before we leave. Yeah. So I saw that you were recently interviewed by Koshi. Yeah. So you don't have to explain your answer, okay? But just one word, who's the better interviewer, me or Ko Koshi? Koshi or Bushy? Yeah. Look, different styles, mate. <laughs> <laughs> different approaches. Both are excellent. And certainly um, Koshi's, Koshi's uh, you know what, is one take Koshi. He was great. You've got a more relaxed style, which coaxes more out of the interviewer. So, um, yeah, absolutely you, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's all you had to say. All you had to say was Yeah, Bushy. hands down. I should have said it straight away. <laughs> hands down. <laughs> Paul, that's fantastic. We've heard a couple of things about what's on your radar coming up. What are you most excited about? Honestly, I'm passionate about, you can hear me, you know, my energy goes up when I'm talking about teaching people about e-commerce. And um, of course, I love my clients and want to see there's a couple there that I think can be, you know, a billion dollars in valuation. There's some rockets, you know, g Co and Mason Sabre and Mr. Mar, and there's so many good ones out there, Baby Boo and God, I just so many. But I honestly think for me, what gets me going at the moment is the idea that someone could read my book or do my course and just be like, oh, yeah, I, I was, you know, like, like my wife. She had three kids and she's been in mental health as a profession and now she wants a change. I love the idea that maybe I could help influence that change, but actually, you know, someone could succeed and be like, yeah, you know what? I am actually working a balanced life and making some money and paying my bills and, and bettering my life. That absolutely gets me going. So I just, um, I'm excited about teaching people, particularly newbies, about e commerce. That's my passion right now. Yeah. Can you imagine some of the emails that you're going to get in a few years' time? That's what exactly what I am picturing. Like, that'll be it. It'll be like, oh, you know, you helped me and I've done X, Y, and Z. And even for my clients, I always write down their goals. I say, what are your goals? I write them down. And I know for them often when they've hit them. And that's a good feeling for me because it's we. Like, I feel 
a part of what they're doing. So that's pretty much why I'm doing it to get those emails in a couple of years. How good. Um, so, Paul, we are going to put a link to Shopify for Dummies into the show notes and onto the blog. So everyone go out and grab it, grab your copy. How can people get in touch with you? What's the best channel to do that? Yeah, and give me your feedback. Absolutely. Welcome that. You know, if there's something you want me to clarify in the book or whatever, I, I, please re- reach out. Just you know, hit me up on LinkedIn or now on Instagram, Nathan. So just give me a follow. Oh, look out. I, I dodged it for 10 years and now I've decided like, if I'm teaching to beginners, I should get on the you know get on one of the platforms where they are. But yeah, just at Paul Waddy e-commerce on LinkedIn or um, Instagram, or, or just head to paulwaddy.com or learnecommerce.com.au. Paul, fantastic! So great to catch up with you. Maybe we'll do it again in a couple of years' time. We can read some of those emails. Yeah, love to, mate. I've really enjoyed it, mate. You are definitely better than Koshi, and um, it's been a it's been a good catch up. You've given me my uh, little blurb to go at the start of this and all my promotional material. So thank you very much, mate. (laughs) Very good. Now, this is the part of the episode where I normally stop and give you some tips from the episode. But this bloke has actually written a whole book on them. So it wasn't easy narrowing them down to three. But here goes. Number one, ABC inventory analysis. I knew this wasn't going to be your stock standard tip when I asked Paul about the most underused feature of Shopify, and I wasn't disappointed. I didn't want like customer tagging or dynamic discounting. I wanted something meaty, and we got it with Paul's tip. Have a look at the ABC inventory analysis in Shopify in the reporting if you haven't already. It will help identify your best sellers and the products at risk of selling out, and like Paul said, help you cull the stock that's no longer profitable for you added into your uh, arsenal of analytics tools. Number two, top apps. There was absolutely no sitting on the fence when I asked Paul for his top Shopify apps. While he didn't give us all 10 that are in his book, what a big tease, he gave us three. Customer service tool, Gorgeous, 460 for shoppable social and user-generated content, and back in stock for, well, back in stock notifications. Check them all out on the Shopify app store. Number three, Perspective and purpose. While to many of us, Paul might be Mr. Retail or Mr. Ecom or Mr. Shopify now, Paul knows it's just a part of who he is and his story. I love that he credits his mum for his passion to help others and help everyone get the most out of their journey. And I'm a big believer that when you have a big lofty mission like Paul has, it helps keep everything in perspective day to day and make the long-term goals that little bit bigger. To get the highlights of today's episode, head on over to addtocart.com.au and sign up for our free newsletter. Each Tuesday, we will send Monday's episode summary, links, and discount codes for you to go next level on. And if you're looking to explore your next e-commerce opportunity, come and visit us at eSuite. We're a dedicated e-commerce talent agency, connecting the best e-commerce talent with the fastest growing brands in Australia. Head on over to esuitetalent.com.au where you can download the free e-commerce salary guide and sign up to our weekly e-commerce job emails. Thanks for listening. And until next time, keep those customers adding to cart.